good morning Nana and welcome to our today's lesson that is uh, going to be on the topic of the digestive system. Just as we mentioned uh, in our last lesson, when you were dealing with uh, the topic uh, as the breathing system. So I would say we mentioned in our discussion that the breathing system uh, has several parts, but the main parts are only five. We mentioned the nose being the, being the first one, followed by the trachea. But there's something being mentioned for the trachea, or which we say that the trachea looks like that. From the nose, the trachea looks like that. After the junction, it has the junction there that leads to the, to, the, to the lungs. So we mentioned something that it has. We didn't mention this. I, I, I just, I just uh, omitted it. But it has, it has C-shaped. They are called C-shaped, C-shaped rings that are called cartilage. So the, the word, that word cartilage lama that is coming there, it has a cartilage, and the work of this cartilage it uh, is to keep open, it keeps, it keeps the, the trachea open at all the time. It keeps open. So when it closes, you'll die. So it keeps, uh, it ke uh, the cartilages keep the trachea open all the time to avoid blockage that can maybe lead to, maybe lead uh, to failure to breathe, that can bring uh, cost, cost death. Then we also have something that we didn't mention, the epiglottis. The epiglottis, double T. Epiglottis, Lana, uh, is, a, is, is a something that blocks food and small particles from entering the trachea. It blocks. Remember, some, at times you can be eating rice, and, uh, in most cases we normally eat rice, but when you eat rice, at times when you are eating in a hurry, you may end up uh, feeling cho being choked. And when you are being choked, Lana, it is this epiglottis that maybe has allowed, has allowed some little uh, a grain, maybe a grain of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the food stuff, to enter into the, the wrong hole, it should end, enter into the. It should, it should go through the food the food pipe. But if it goes by bad luck into the, our trachea, it causes that. So the epiglottis is there at the mouth of our trachea, and its work is to block. It blocks it blocks food food and small particles from entering from entering entering the uh, entering the trachea. So now that is the main, the main thing. I want you just mention that. You have cartilages. Cartilage are just C-shaped ring, the one that form the trachea. If you ever ate, you ever ate uh, uh, chicken, you realize that on the neck we can easily see the, the cartilage. How they are made. They are in segments. One ends there, another one starts there. They are in that form. So those cartilage are those C-shaped rings that help us, help us to keep the trachea open at all the time. So now not so much for that. I now wish to go for our main lesson of today. Our main lesson of today. I was happy most of you are able to do my work well that I gave. A number of you uh, failed some few questions, but I hope you're done the correction. Nana. We now go to our main topic of today, that is the dead system. And uh, just to draw a small structure of how the system looks like. I like beginning like that. So here, contrary to the other one where the main part was the, was the nose, so here we will have the mouth. So the mouth is our main part here. That leads us to the other parts. Then here, we we'll have a part that looks like that. Then we we'll have the small intestine. Then, after everything, 
will have the column So now, now, if you are breaking the way I've drawn my, my parts here, I've drawn the mouth, that is the main part here, the mouth, the first part of the water digital system, and then our second part, second part there is the gullet. The second part there has the, is the gullet, that is at once known as the osophagus, that's four three names, also known as the osophagus. Or the full pipe itself. So now it has three names the gallet, the esophagus, or the full pipe. So from the mouth, food will go to the food to the, through the food pipe to the stomach. This is the stomach. And then from the stomach, you can see there is a part here that is called the duodenum. Duodenum. And then the lunar food go directly into the small, small intestines, the small intestine, and for the small intestine is also called the ilium. So it's also called the ilium. And then from there, food will go to the large intestine. Large intestine. That is also called, also known as the, the colon. And then food will finally go to the rectum. Rectum and finally the anus. So Lana, the picture, the, the diagram I've just drawn here is called, this one is called the alimentary canal. Lana, let me read these terms. The alimentary, the alimentary canal. So listen carefully, Lana. The alimentary canal is the this is the, uh, this track from the mouth, from the mouth, through the gullet, the stomach, to the small intestine, to the large intestine, and finally, rectum, and finally to the what? The anus. So, food moves from the mouth to the anus, through, uh, that, 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 that organ is called the alimentary canal. So, you may be asked, which ones are the parts of the alimentary canal? You should name this, this part that I've mentioned the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, the rectum, the anus, and the duodenum. There are parts that are not parts of the alimentary canal. It's just the, the passage of food, where food passes. Food will pass from the mouth until the end, that's the way I've just shown. So when you are come to see some parts here, you see something called the pancreas. When you talk of the pancreas, the pancreas is not part of the alimentary canal, but it is part of the digestive system. I hope that we are, we are, I'm very clear to you, Lana. The pancreas here, that produces the pancreatic juice, uh, juice is not part of the alimentary canal. The alimentary canal is the passage of food, where food passes from the mouth until the anus. And then, we also have another part that is not part of the, part of the alimentary canal, but it's part of the digestive system. That is, uh, is known like this, drawn like this, and then there is that organ. So this one is the liver, and then here is the here is the is the, is the gallbladder, the gallbladder. So the gallbladder. It's where bile. Bile is produced here at the liver and it is stored at the bile duct, at the, at the, at the gallbladder. From the gallbladder, you have a duct. This one is the gallbladder. So there's a duct. A duct is just a, like a, 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 what is connected to it. That, that brings whatever is stored here to, the, to this part that is the, the duodenum. So the duct, that is the, uh, the bile duct is the one that brings, transports bile stored in the, uh, in the gallbladder to the duodenum, and that is its only function. So let us go uh, uh, slowly by slowly to make you understand this particular part. 
the digestive system has three parts. The digestive system has three parts. It has three parts. Its main parts, number one, is the alimentary canal that I've just written there, and I've drawn it here for you to see. The liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas are not part of the alimentary canal. I've mentioned other parts from the mouth, how food moves until the anus is what we refer to as the alimentary canal. The second part of the digestive system is the pancreas itself. The pancreas, and then number three, we have the liver. So the liver, the pancreas, and the alimentary canal all makes this system called the digestive system. I hope we are clear now. When I'm not in that manner, it becomes very simple. The liver here, I would say, has uh, the liver produces the liver produces bile that is a digestive juice, and bile. Bile is stored. Bile is stored at is stored in the in the gallbladder. Bile is stored in the gallbladder. Bile is stored in the gallbladder. And then transported, it is transported to the to the duodenum. Transported to the duodenum through through the bile duct. So now we get terminology here. The first one is the pancreas. A pan the pancreas is an organ that is in the, the in the, uh, is among the, the three parts of the digestive system that produces pancreatic juice. Produces pancreatic juice. And what is the function of this pancreatic juice, man? Pancreatic juice pancreatic juice is among the juice that helps in digestion of food. Then the liver produces bile, as we have said. Bile is stored in the gallbladder and it is transported to the duodenum it, the, the, uh, through the bile duct. So we have said bile, bile duct is there. That does the transportation. Gallbladder where bile is stored. And where it is produced is the liver. The liver produces bile. That is later stored in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder stores it temporarily. And the organ for transportation is the bile duct. So I think I understood that, Nana. You need to know the meaning of digestion now. Because all of this, the meaning of digestive system, it's a system for digestion. So what is digestion? Digestion is the breakdown of food particles into smaller digestible particles. The breakdown of food, of food into digestible particles. The breakdown of food. So digestion of food, digestion is the breakdown. The breakdown of food, breakdown of food into digestible particles. Take an example, Anna. Let me give you this example. You eat uh, maize and beans. We normally call it Gideria food. So maize and beans eaten whole. Assume that you are not chewed even a single, a single uh, maize and bean. Um, a single maize, maybe, and then you swallow it the way it is. You realize that uh, you realize that you can't swallow it uh, easily. Why? Because it is whole. You must chew it into small particles to make it be digested eh, by the body. So, having known the meaning of digestion, we can now move forward to go to the functions of this particular part that we have mentioned. These functions. What are there? The functions, the functions of this particular, of these uh, parts of the of the digestive system. So number one, we have the mouth. The mouth was our number one, and in the mouth there, 
we have three things. Number one, we have the teeth. Number B, we have saliva. Uh, C, we have the tongue. So these are the main parts that are in the teeth. We need to know what are the function of these things. Number one, the teeth. The teeth does a number of things. In class four, I remember we learned about uh, the type of teeth that we have, the type of teeth. For which we began with the teeth that cuts. So it cuts, and we have another teeth that tears. You know the that teeth? Then we have the one that crushes, or talk of grind, can also grind food. So the teeth, that is the, the one that the teeth does. The teeth cuts, tears, or crushes, or talk of grinding food. So it grinds into, food is broken down into small particles. The teeth breaks food into small particles that the, 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 that the, the, food, the food pipe can now swallow in for digestion. Then there is saliva. Saliva is among the digestive juice. Saliva is a digestive juice. You must know that now. And uh, saliva is produced by the saliva gland. Saliva is produced by the produced produced by the salivary salivary gland. Why is the salivary gland? The salivary glands are are, are uh, the salivary glands are under the tongue. They are under under the tongue. They are under the tongue. You look at your tongue down there under it we have the salivary glands. And the salivary glands produces saliva, which has, what is the work of the saliva? The saliva digests starch. Very important. Let me remove this one first to name the function of the saliva. The saliva, saliva digests starch. I know we are, uh, okay, not only starch, but it, it, break, it, it digests, it digests, uh, Digest simple food. Eh? Let me talk about that. Digest simple food. Simple food. E.g. starch. Starch is an example of a simple food. Uh, then number two, it softens. It softens. It softens food for easy swallowing. Softens food for easy swallowing. Meaning the body can just swallow. You, you can force yourself to swallow something that is uh, hard. But for easy swallowing, to make it, for you not to strain while you're swallowing, you need to use, we need to use the saliva to, look, uh, to lubricate the food. Uh, the food so that it can be easily swallowed by the, by the, by, by our system. So now we're going to have the tongue. The tongue is another part of the mouth. The tongue, dot number three, the tongue, so the tongue learner, the tongue forms boluses, it's made a lot to form, it forms boluses, boluses which are swallowed, boluses which are swallowed. Food is only swallowed in terms of boluses, you can't swallow food whole. After chewing, it goes little by little in, term, in, in form of boluses to make you uh, the, the, the food pipe swallow it correctly. So we go to our second uh, organ, our second part of the, of the digestive system, that is the esophagus. Number two is the esophagus. Esophagus, so that is also known as the, it has several names. The esophagus is also called the gullet and also called the food pipe. So all these are the names you can get any on the examination, so you should not be confused. So in this particular uh, issue, we, have, we are going to talk of a process called peristalsis. Lana, can you say it after me? Peristalsis. So peristalsis is a process by which food passes through the esophagus. This is the process by which food passes through the process that allows food 
to pass through the esophagus. The process by which food passes through the also also fungus. And we have to draw it how it takes place. Someone drawn in this manner. I hope you have seen such a picture somewhere. These are the walls of the oxophagus. And then food now moves in that man. Food moves here as the day go continue like that. So these are the walls, these are the walls. And then these ones are there, the food. Of talk of boluses. Boluses of food. So now I just have a guess mentioned that it's a process. So food goes in, bit by bit, through, you by, uh, as food moves, talk of that one is the peri peristalsis. Peri peristalsis is the process by which food moves through the esophagus in that manner. So when we look at that, we need to go to the last aspect or under that, where you need to know that, you need to know, no, no, let us go to the third one first before I mention, I don't want to mention. The third part, number three, we have the stomach. So the stomach is our, our, our part number three. If you look from up, we have the from up, we have the mouth, the mouth, we have the fruit pipe. So having the stomach, the stomach is a very important part that stores food. So number one here, it stores food for three to four hours, very important. You may be asked, how long does food stay in the stomach? Food stays between three to four hours. Food can't stay in the stomach more than those hours. So you have to know that. Between three to four hours, three to four hours, is the time that food can last in your stomach. Then the stomach produces, produces gastric, this. So we'll ask, where is gastric juice produced? Gastric juice is produced at the stomach. We we'll ask that. And what are the functions of that gastric juice? Gastric juice help in digestion of proteins. Gastric juice helps in digestion of proteins. That is not only law. Digestion of protein is the work of gastric juice. So examples of protein, you can mention meat, it's an example of a plant, of, a, of an animal protein, all the type of meat, meat, pork, beef, and etc. Then we have the plant proteins, like beans. All of them are being digested by use of, by use of the gastric juice. And then, it has several functions. It also contains, gastric juice contains, gastric juice also contains, it contains, contains hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, very important, which kill germs to protect uh, that are present in the food. So the work of this hydrochloric acid is to kill it kills germs in the food. So meaning you, you may eat food that has germs. Maybe uh, you have eaten meat that was not well cooked. So meaning it can still contain some germs. So this hydrochloric acid that is uh, available to digest proteins will help to kill the germs that were in it. Now I hope we are together. So we have the last part that is in the, in the, in the stomach there. Next to the stomach, we have the duodenum. Just write it as number four. Duodenum, our duodenum, mentioned that it comes just after the, after the stomach. Stomach look like that. So after the stomach is there, we have that part that follows there. It's called the duodenum. 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 So let's look at the function of the duodenum. 
it's um, it uh, is connected to the pancreas. The duodenum is connected connected to the pancreas pancreas and the bile duct and the bile duct and the bile duct from the liver from the liver that is his only function just connected so from here we can easily see it the pancreas will uh, come somewhere there that is the pancreas and then this side we have that this system called the, the liver so the duct from the from the liver joins it at that place and then the the, 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 the duct from the from the pancreas also join it the, the pancreas joins it and then it also joins that's why I talk about it connects the bile at the bile duct uh, to it and then the liver the the, the pancreas also to it so from there we will go to a very critical part very very important known as the the, the, the ileum also known as the small intestine you need to know a lot of things in that area so the small intestine becomes our number number five number five becomes the small intestine so we call it the small intestine or the ileum, also called the ileum. So, Rana, the ileum, you know how long is it? It is seven meters long. You may be asked, how long is the ileum? And the answer will be the ileum, the ileum is seven meters long. It is seven meters long. It produces intestinal produces intestinal juice intestinal juice that digests any food food substance the work of this intestinal juice is to digest it digests any any food particle particles that that one not digested that were not digested that are not well, eh? not well, that one, not well digested, good. So when food comes from, uh, uh, enters into the small intestine from the, from the duodenum, that food that was not well digested is being digested now by the, by the small intestine, but by use of what? By use of uh, intestinal juice. Then uh, it is highly coiled, why, they are, why is it highly coiled? It is highly coiled to increase the surface area for digestion. You know how this it coils, right? So that coiling is there to increase. It is coiled to increase the surface area for digestion and absorption of food. And then it has the villi. There's another part they are coming, the villi. And the villi are like fingers. Eh? Let me just draw it a bit. It may look like this. So any part has a villi. Villi are like fingers. They look like your fingers, eh? In it, where uh, the villi are look like finger. They are finger-like projections which contain blood capillaries. So the villi contain blood capillaries. Contain blood capillaries. You may be a very function of the blood capillaries in the villa. The blood capillaries, Lana, uh, absorb digested food. Absorbs digested, digested food. So the villa contain blood capillaries that absorb, absorb digested food in our stomach, in our in the, in the small intestine. Then they have thin wall. The villa as well. These same thin villa have. Thin wall. You may be asked, why do they have thin wall, Lana? They have thin wall to uh, to allow food to pass through them easily. To allow food to pass easily. To allow food to pass through them very easily. Then digestion ends in the ileum. Here is where 
the ilium here, the small intestine is where food ends, digestion. So digestion, digestion of food ends. Digestion of food begins in the mouth and ends in the ilium. It doesn't go past the ilium. Now we go to our last part. And that is the last, uh, the large intestine. The large intestine is also known, is also known, is also known as the, the summer seven, the large intestine, or the colon. You can call it the colon. So the colon, the matter work of the colon is absorption. Absorption. Absorption of food. No, no, absorption of water. Of water. And mineral. And mineral salts. That is a major function. It absorbs water and mineral salts. Then number two, it has muscular walls. You'll be asked, why does it have muscular walls? Muscular wall. The word muscular here means strong. It has muscular walls to squeeze food, uh, material that passes through it. It squeezes, to squeeze it, like finger, eh? So it squeezes food that passes through it. It has muscular walls to squeeze, to squeeze food. Because of the, it, it absorbs that water and mineral salt. So it, it absorbs by squeezing the food. That was done by the muscular wall. And then from there, Lana, well, the rectum. I won't write it there. The rectum is the second last part. And the rectum, Lana, the rectum stores uh, the undigested food. And mark that word undigested. Food that were not, that are our first door digestion. So those food will be stored there. It, the, it, uh, the rectum stores food temporarily. It stores food temporarily. Then finally, those food that are stored in the rectum are now released. So the last part of the digest of the of the digestive system, or of the top of the alimentary canal, becomes the the anus. It opens to a, a, to the outside to allow an indigested food, food uh, to allow indigested food that is feces to pass out of the body. And that is the last part of our of our of the system. So Lana, that long discussion, I now wish to give you work that we do. Finally, I'll mark it to see if you're able to understand the digestive system or not. So we mentioned something about the alimentary canal. The alimentary canal is also known as the gut. Let me mention that. It's also known as the gut system. So we may get that. So that's the alimentary canal, also known as the gut. So don't fail to know that. The anus. Minus, you remove the pancreas and the liver. The, the gut has no pancreas and the liver. It's all those parts that are there, excluding those two parts. So those two parts I've just mentioned, they are the support organs that produces the energies that are used in the digestion of the food. So until next time, I want to wish you well. Have a blessed day full of a lot of work that you are being given by the teachers. Bye.